This is Holy Week. In our journey from ashes, from repentance and brokenness towards God and beauty and life and resurrection, this is a, a very sacred time. My friend Ron says really what we're trying to do together is to name the sacred in what we all think about as secular. And I love that because all of existence is sacred. All of the earth was made and loved by God. But especially this week when Jesus is moving towards the ultimate expression of God's love on a cross, this is Holy Week. And we walk through him with it. And in particular, today we go with him into the place of prayer. It's called the Garden of Gethsemane. One of the questions that one of you gave this last week was about prayer. And you said, I find it difficult to pray. In my head, so often I will have these thoughts that there doesn't seem to be a God that's listening. But in my heart, I know my ultimate commitment is otherwise. How do I, how do I bring my whole self into this? And I sure struggle with prayer. So I want to give just two phrases, and then we'll spend some time praying today. And the first one is be still. That experience when you go to pray and you have all kinds of thoughts come into your mind, or at least that I do, is there really anybody listening? Does it really make a difference? Am I just putting on a front, trying to sound holy with God when the truth is in another day or another hour or maybe five more seconds, my mind is going to be so far away from God it's not funny? And I wrestle with, we all do, what this neuropsych researcher I mentioned, Jeffrey Schwartz, calls uh, deceptive brain messages that tempt me to ruminate and to brood and to spiral down into anxiety or anger or inadequacy. And the wise advocate, the Holy Spirit, is not speaking in that voice. And so I join together with Jesus to just let those thoughts fade away. I don't have to fight them. I don't have to argue with them. I don't have to resist them. Ruth Haley Barton talks about uh, having the image of maybe a jar of pond water where when it's all swirled up, it's dense and cloudy. But if you just let it sit and be still, the sentiment falls away to the bottom and it grows clear. And the mind is that way. Henry Nouwen used to say when he would go to prayer, his mind would be so jumbled, it's a wonderful image, that it's like a monkey in a banana tree, just hopping from one branch to another. Got to have that banana, got to have that banana. I want to have this. I'm afraid I might get this. I don't feel adequate because of that. I've got doubts around. And so just let the monkey settle down. Just be still. Allow my mind and my body to grow quiet so that I can be fully present to God. Be still. We fight this because very often it makes us anxious. That's okay. Be still. Our mind will come up with a bunch of things that we have to do or a bunch of things that might be bad. It's okay. Be still. And then be real. Be still and be real. C.S. Lewis, in one of his books, Letters to Malcolm, Chiefly on Prayer, says that this is the prayer that begins every prayer. May it be the real I who speaks. May it be the real thou that I speak to. And one of the great barriers to prayer, at least for me, is I know the real I is not holy. I had a conversation last week with a friend of mine. His name is Claude, and he's a pastor, and he was just checking in on how I'm doing, and he was asking, have you been real with God? He's an African-American pastor, and often in the black church, there is a, uh, such a history of suffering and lament that uh, the skill of being real, transparent, honest before God is often embedded there in ways that it's sometimes not for me. And he was telling me about a movie. I think I saw it when it first came out more than 20 years ago. It's called The Apostle, starring Robert Duvall, and he plays this Pentecostal preacher and at the beginning of the movie, he is quite mad with God. And he just yells at him. He says, you call me Sonny, I call you Jesus, but I'm mad at you, Jesus. I'm going to yell at you. And Claude was asking me, have you been real like that? And so I got that movie and I watched it. And that scene was quite moving to me. Because I think sometimes I'm probably a little afraid, maybe a lot afraid, to be honest and real with lots of people, but maybe especially God. And so then the next morning I prayed and said, God, I want to be uh, as honest and real with you as I know how to be. And then I began to write out a prayer, a prayer of lament, where I poured out 
so much of the um, hurt and anguish and anger. And I realized when I was writing it out, there was a sentence that I needed to express, and I wrote it down, and I won't say what it is. It has to do with hatred inside me. And I don't think of myself as a hateful person or one who has carried that around a lot, but uh, it was a very, very painful sentence. And a real wise friend said to me yesterday, John, I think instead of trying to be nice, he said, so often Christians just have a hard time being real, like being human. Maybe you just need to live with that sentence for a while. I just need to be real with God and trust that God can handle my real self with all of the darkness and the anger and the inadequacy and the doubt and the fear and the uncertainty that is there. I just need to be still and to be real. And of course, that's what Jesus does in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he tells his friends his soul is in anguish. And he tells his father his heart's desire is not to do the thing that he's afraid is actually his mission. But then he offers the prayer, and it's the model for the prayer that you and I are offer. Nevertheless, God, if you're willing, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to suffer like this. I don't want to go through this. Nevertheless, not my will. Your will be done. Your will be done. Your will be done. So I want to invite you now into the garden, into the holy place, which is wherever you are. I want to invite you to be still and be real. And we're going to use uh, that, that sentence from Scripture about being still, and I'll go through it a number of times, uh, omitting a phrase every time, to allow you to be still with God. So I want to invite you right now, if you would, bow your head and close your eyes if that helps you. Take a deep breath. Breath is the gift of God, the gift of life, the spirit breath. God is right here. And now you bring your real self with your hurts, your fears, your doubts, your loves, your hates, your anger, your hope, your whatever it is. You let your mind be. Now, hear these words and offer your mind in prayer to God. Be still and know that I am God. And now this, be still and know that I am. And now this, be still and know. Be still and know this from your father. Be so that's all there is to talking with God. Today, be still, be real. I'll see you tomorrow.